Greetings, unsettled soul. Welcome to the correct views. And guess what, friends? It is the Halloween edition. Now, I'm going to begin this one a little bit differently because, as you know, Christella is not with the show and I'm doing this solo. So I want you guys to know something before we get into this. All the news that I'm about to give you is real news. All the sources I give you are real sources. All the characters I give you have never existed, but they could have. Yes, they could have. Um, it is not politically correct. If it offends you, feel free to make a video that offends me. It's fine. It's Halloween. We are not politically correct here, but we're going to give you the news, and we're going to have some fun. So please don't tune out. Whenever the screen goes black, you might hear somebody with an English accent. That's Bob, the Invisible Man. He didn't want to come on air today because he said he's having a bad hair day, but he will, in fact, be on the Media Speaks on Saturday at 2 p.m. for the uh, Halloween show that we are doing there as well. So please enjoy what I'm doing. Feel free to critique my acting if you wish, but do me one small favor. Do remember that I'm doing this all in one take. Maybe I should dedicate it to Peter Sellers. Friends, welcome to the Halloween edition of The Correct Views. Stay tuned because I think you're going to like it. Hey, 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 man. <laughs> what, what's up, man? I haven't seen you guys in, like, so freaking long. <laughs> I got my own show. Like, I had two subscribers, and, and now I got, like, none. So I kind of came back to the views to see if I could cut. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really suck. I, <laughs> here we go. Uh, independent.co.uk that means they're like over in England we're like NRK in the UK and, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, UN to call on governments around the world to decriminalize all drugs <laughs> says Richard Banson now I, mean, I don't know about you but I mean all drugs certainly seems like an awful lot of drugs, like more drugs than you'd normally expect. The UN may be about to call on all governments of all countries, even America, I bet, to end the war on drugs and decriminalize the use and possession of all illegal substances. I heard this, I got like so excited. Like deep down in like my loins and shit, man. In an extraordinary post on his Virginia website, Richard Branson said he had been shown a report by the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, uh, which dramatically changed the organization's stance on drugs control. Well, you don't really have a stance on drugs control anymore. I mean, it's kind of like a fall over. <laughs> which is something I have done before. He said that the as yet unreleased statement had been sent to some of the world's media under embargo, Ooh. but that he has gone public with it early for fear that the UN were bow to pressure by not going ahead with the employee move. You see, basically they found out there's like a whole lot of money to be made, like, Mad De Niro, dude. If you can lock up people through drug use and shit. But if you can go ahead, man, and tax them, they made some money off the taxes. And huh, maybe we can make war <laughs> just making it legal, you know. The UN was preparing to declare unequivocally that the criminalization is harmful and unnecessary and disappropriate. It says a document changing the UN stance on drug control was supposed to be released at a conference 
that happened like over in Malaysia, like way over there in the Orient. And it was on Sunday, but it got delayed. <laughs> Probably because they were like smoking and he lost track of the time. <laughs> what time is it anyway? As I'm writing this, well, <laughs> not, not me, I just what it says here. This, this dude. As I'm writing this, I'm hearing that at least one government is putting in an inordinate amount of pressure. I bet you it's the U.S. <laughs> All right, guys, I got, we got one more story. They don't let me talk long because they said, like, oh, basically, I'm annoying. So, you know, I don't get to stay very long. Oh, uh, DailyMail.co.uk have researchers discovered an alien mega <laughs> Bizarre star <laughs> could be surrounded by a Dyson sphere <coughs> by extraterrestrials. And like the researchers and shit were talking about this. I was like, oh, it, man. I'm like, oh, I'm going back on the like, call. Oh, we and I'm going to. I know what story I'm mean, They got aliens and like a mega death structure and stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Peace out. Researchers have revealed a bizarre star that they say could be surrounded by a huge, like, mega alien structure known as a Dyson sphere. KIC, like a bunch of numbers, man. 8462852. Located 1,480 light years. Of Oh, I think a long way away, dude. It was monitored by the Kepler Space Telescope for more than four freaking years. It, like, started in 09 and shit. And now researchers say they cannot explain the strange fluctuation in the light that it emits. And it kind of led some to claim, listen to this, friends, check this out. You're, like, still going to want to hit subscribe. It could have a huge alien mega structure in front of it. Like, I never thought I'd get the same mega alien structure and have it be, like, real, like, real science, but, uh, <laughs> we've never seen anything like this star, Tabitha and Boyajina, it's a postdoc at Yale said. It's really weird. I mean, that's what I was saying, like, she knows, man, she must have been at the UN. <laughs> we thought it might be a bad data or movement from the spacecraft or everything checked out. So basically, it wasn't the telescope itself, like, you know, messing with their heads or nothing. She recently published a paper on the online journal Eric's outlining the possible causes and discounting many of them. Now, look, Sam's over looking at me. No, man, it's like A-R-X-I-V. It's Arx, man. Don't give me that. I'm, I'm going to be doing it in a minute, dude. Let me go. Anyway... Over the duration of the Kepler mission, which is like a really long ass time, KIC and all them numbers, it was observed to undergo irregularity shaped a paradigm dips in flux, like flux pavilion, down below the 20% level. Our researchers flagged the star as bizarre in 2011. And they're only reporting about it now. I think they were probably getting high at the UN. <laughs> I missed it and stuff. Now we'll get it later. Uh, it gives you all the graphs and charts to prove that it's like totally real. Aliens should always be the very last hypothesis you consider, Penn said. Astronomer Jason Wright told the Atlantic, but this looked like something we could expect an alien civilization to enjoy. So it's like really, really cool. Like they made a really found proof of aliens. And they got, like, SETI involved, and they've long suggested they could detect these kind of things. Well, it's like they kind of been detected. So uh, they're looking for signs of life. And, man, I think it's awesome. Like, they might have found some. All right, Sam said, like, I got to go, or nobody's going to watch anymore. So I'm going like, to click off and let that cool uh, English dude come back, like the invisible man. You know, I'm afraid that Buddy Puff had shut off the freaking microphone instead of shutting off the actual uh, the, ca the camera like he should have. So let me say again, I am the invisible man. I am not on air. I'm just hosting, you see, because my hair looks absolutely dreadful. But you will see me. Trust me, you will see me. I will be on the media speaks. So you you don't want to go to the media speaks. Nothing is more more amazing 
than going to a media space because they also doing this like Saturday thing. Now, who, who do we have next? Larry Throwing Back. Oh, Larry Throwing Back. I had a drink with Larry Throwing Back before the show. A drink? Yes, he only had one left for me. Is he ready? I think he's ready. Larry. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Ready for what? The, 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 your, your segment. Your segment is on. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Here's Larry throwing back. Oh, God. <laughs> this here isn't. Now, I'm well aware that that's not why he tuned in for me to tell you this about hearing it.
Oh, let's see if I can't put him back on the, the, the core English guy. You know, that didn't make any sense at all. I do believe he shut his microphone off. We're probably going to have to completely eliminate his port. It's incredibly hard to do these things when you buy yourself. Oh my, who is next? You shut the microphone off? I, mean, I didn't shut the microphone off. I think that idiot Larry did. Well, how are we supposed to show any of Larry's work? Well, we're going to probably have to edit it. Lovely. Just lovely. What else do we have? Well, we got someone new. Billy Joe Bob Jimmy John. What? I said, please try to pay attention. Billy Joe Bob Jimmy John. Um, where's he from? He is from West Virginia. Why am I not surprised? He said he's going to do the most wonderful job. Well, I guess he can't do worse than shutting off his mic halfway through his own report so that we have to edit it out on replay. Well, I mean, pretty much anything's got to be going better than that. Should we go ahead and put him on, or should we skip him and go straight to ARG? No, never mind. Don't go to ARG. I'm, last year, he was a disaster. Please tell me ARG's not here. Oh, he is! Want me to put him on now? No, I don't want you to put him on now. Go ahead and put Billy... Who? Billy Bob Joe Jimmy John. He's new. I, he's new. He's new. I, you told me. Are we ready? Yes! Hello. Oh, we are. Oh, we are all. I didn't even know who we were all. Oh, well, we all. We are, we are all. Listen to the video abortion that says it should be a great idea to burn unborn babies is still. Now, I thought this was kind of interesting, and I think that the reason they gave me this particular story was because I really knew something about the delonking into the woods like they're going to be talking about in a minute. They like to talk about tromping into the woods. I, I know all about that. So listen to this. As the Planned Parenthood aborted baby parts saga rumbles on, uh, the fresh footage has emerged of an abortionist work, working at a separate institution suggesting that it would be wonderful to be able to burn a baby 40 fetuses as fuel. Now, I don't really see anything wrong with burning babies as fuel, except for the fact that you probably shouldn't do it. Like it probably against somebody's religion or something like that. But the previously unreleased footage, which was acquired by the Center for Medical Progress, was leaked by someone within the group. The Life News reports the video was filmed at the National Abortion Federation's conference where the abortion industry meets up to talk shop. The NAF has attempted to block the release of the footage, which is why it has remained unreleased. So I guess they must have kind of leaked it when they weren't supposed to. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on that you ain't supposed to be doing, like burning up baby tissue and stuff. The video shows Renee Shailene, owner of the Northland Family Planning, <coughs> the chain of abortion clinics, discussing how she has so many leftover aborted fetuses that she don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Jillian, who is claimed to be responsible for approximately 25% of all abortions in Michigan, knows how a medical recycling company called Stericycle stopped providing service so they like to stop picking up all the dead babies and stuff. I was just so consumed with fatal tissue that I was ready to drive to Alta, Michigan and have a bonfire. And it was just trying to figure out, you know, how I wouldn't get stopped or how far into the woods you'd have to go. To have this fire and nobody could come and see me, Chile and say it's the gathering of the NAF. And this is a perfect story for Halloween time, so I'm glad I got it. Now, to answer her question as to exactly how far you'd need to go into the woods in order to go ahead and burn baby without anybody telling tell. Thing is, if you're cooking like sausages and things like that with it, then you don't have to go that far back. Because if you do, you're just going to attract bear. And once you attract bear, it's all hey, you're into that. You ain't a bear be eating your baby fetus. And you know, it's not what you're looking for. <clears throat> as long as you're cooking, cooking you up some like wieners and sausages and dogs and things like that. And you can fry some taters. <clears throat> once you got that done, then you ain't got to go that far back. Because the smell is just going to sound like regular meat. It's going to smell like regular meat. Yeah, you know, no one's got to know you're really burning up babies. It's kind of rare, so you don't got to go back too far. Unless, of course, you're only going to burn baby parts. Then you probably want to go all the way back there so that nobody smells it, even if it attracts a couple bears. 
And she later admits she believes it'd be a great idea to be able to burn what was left of a born babies for energy, but regretfully admits that it'd kind of be a PR nightmare. Now, I think it could be a PR nightmare. That's why it's best to go ahead. Like I said, cooking with like smoked sausages and things. I think a lot of people won't notice it as much if you do it like that. Let me make sure I didn't shut my mic off the way that other idiot did. No way, I my, my mic's working great. I, I can see my face and everything. I'm so happy to be here on the correct views that I could damn near dip my toes. Creepy, off realistic sex robots are facing a ban in the UK. Now, the fun. First of all, they told you you weren't allowed to elope with your sister. That was the one thing they always harped on. You couldn't be with sister. Couldn't be with sister. Nah, it looks like you can't even be with a piece of plastic. And I don't know about you, but if my name ain't Billy Joe Bob Jimmy John, if I'm not offended by this, the more I look at this, the more upset I can become. What would Bush have done? A campaign has been launched to try and ban the development of ultra-realist sex robots. Using sophisticated robotics to develop realistic human dolls capable of performing sex acts is very disturbing indeed. I didn't think it was very disturbing. It all depends on what kinds of acts she wants. I mean, I wasn't going to ask anybody for a disturbing sex act. Sex dolls are increasingly becoming more and more realistic with many manufacturers now striving to build artificial intelligence into Well, that's kind of cool because my sister didn't even have any non-artificial intelligence. She like no intelligence at all. So I might be able to make a doll that looks like my sister, but isn't my sister. That'd be kind of cool, you know, and then I guess it's uh, going to be banned. <laughs> Sex dolls are increasingly becoming more realistic. Well, I'm happy to hear about I said, I'm happy to hear about that. Dr. Richard said a robot ethicist, a robot ethicist. You mean they got ethics with them doll robots? Yeah, I guess that they were at Demont University in Lang Lancaster hoping to raise awareness on the issue and persuade those working on sex robots to rethink their technology. The news comes weeks after Dr. Dr. Alan Driscoll, a leading on authority at the psychology of sex and relationships, claimed that sex with robots would become the social norm within the next 50 years. Sex tech is very advanced. At a pace of 50 years' time, physical relationships will be seeming primitive. Then to confirm it, academic told the BBC that sex robots seem to be growing, focusing the robotics industry. So basically what they're trying to do now is make it illegal in the UK. I hope they'll make it illegal like they did things. I used to have my so much fun with my sister. Friends, you are listening to the correct views. I thank you so much for two. And I'm go I, I guess I'm going I guess I'm going to have to leave is what I'm saying. I guess, I guess it's farewell. I don't know if I liked his reporting or not. He seemed rather crass. Well, I he's he's got some edges that you're you're gonna want to polish over. I mean, I admit he's he's not flawless. Not flawless. Not flawless. That was some of the worst reporting that I've ever had. What do you mean, not flawless? I don't think I've ever had a worse report. Well, we we probably will now. Arg is up, isn't he? Oh, yes! Well, I do love when Arg is on the show. You're the only one that could possibly love when Arg is on the show. Do you know what he has this time to talk about? Most likely nothing I want to hear. For those of you that don't know, Arg Mortis is our, uh, our, our public relations specialist. Whatever you call the show, whenever you call the correct views, it's ARG that answers the phone. Surprisingly enough, some people, once once that phone call is made, some people don't ever, ever call back. And I, I think it could be something about his demeanor. I think he has the most wonderful demeanor. What's he doing with knives? And he's getting ready to call the pumpkin. Is he doing a show or is he carving a damn pumpkin? Oh, I don't know, but you can ask him yourself. It's time for him to come on. Oh, dear God, friends. Uh, Sam I. B. Deganji, it's Arg Mortis. Arg, please, please don't do what you did last year. Don't flip out. What do you mean, flip out? I don't flip out. When you call the correct news, you talk to me. And when you talk to me, I pass the messages on to Sam. Welcome to the Halloween show. I am Arg Mortis.
Arg, that's... Ugh, leave me alone! Salon! Uh, Salon has the worst stories for Halloween I've ever seen. Americans will not capitulate to the enslavement that we see around us. Now, I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself when I say this, but Americans stand for liberty. And I'm sitting here with these knives because I'm going to carve a pumpkin. But they don't want you to carve a pumpkin. You can look up that the UN is moving to ban these sorts of festivities, looking to ban these sorts of things, because it's not leading to the stability of the globe. And now, Americans who want guns should be shot first. I think this is the most awesome idea I've ever heard. Americans who want to possess guns should have to be shot with one first, or rather at the leftist rag salon suggests. I believe that being shot should be the requirement for gun ownership in America. It's very simple. It's very simple. Dr. Watkins wrote Friday. And I think D. Watkins is a hero. And if anybody should get the Hero of the Year Award, if anybody should get the Nobel Peace Prize, it should be Watkins. The last time somebody got the Peace Prize, it was Obama. And he started more wars than Bush. Expanding on IMO control, commenting that 5,000 bullets would be great. Watkins says that mass shootings would be prevented if hundreds of thousands of law abiding gun owners were shot with guns prior to purchasing them. Your gun, you need to have a gun. You're taking selfies with pistols, I'm taking selfies with knives. You can't live with that. Then take a bullet and you'll be granted the right to purchase a firearm of your choice. It was the author, and he was a former drug dealer, and he's now a teacher. And this teacher is teaching you that if you're going to own a gun, then you should have to be shot with one first. And you can look it up on Salon and you can read about the shootings and the blood and the blood oozing from the holes, oozing in sickening streams of Scarlet Rush. <laughs> After listing various high profile shootings like Colin Line, Watkins admits he gets his information from watching cable news. Oh, yeah, it would be a bloodbath. You'd go into Walmart to buy a gun, and they'd shoot you with it. And I know that I answer the phone here to correct news, because they need a friendly voice on the other end of the phone. But I would leave this job for that. I'm sorry, Sam. I would leave this job. What do you mean you want me to get the job? I'll stab you with this freaking knife as if you were a pumpkin. I've got two stories left. Complex.com. He didn't give me any stupid stories he gave me last year. Imagine being in a house. Imagine being in a house and they dig up the ground and they find a coffin. Now imagine that your house is on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. And in the real life nightmare on Elm Street, woman finds coffin buried in backyard. Digging into the ground, you found a bone basket, didn't she? When in Rome, do as the Romans do, and went on Elvis Street, find a coffin in your backyard. When a Texas woman had a construction worker start digging in her backyard, located on Elvis Street, she was confused when they pulled out a large box from the ground. There's a four-foot coffin. That's right, friends. A bone basket. They found bags filled with pink booties and children's accessories. And they thought the worst. Until a neighbor informed them that it was little Fluffy. Fluffy was a dog and it was buried 30 years ago. And they disturbed its grave. And now it has the angry soul of a pit bull. I might have added the last part on there. Dailymail.co.uk. The last story I'm going to get to involves a, clock, a cockpit full of skeletons. 
plain wreckage containing many skeletons and painted with the Malaysian flag is found on our old Philippine Island. Now, I know that Sam I meet again, she has reported on this. And I know that David Lee is reporting on this. But they don't know a damn thing about anything. I'm Lord Matisse. And when I speak, the world listens, and I've got the solving of this happening right here. I've got the Don't look at me that way, Billy Bob. I'll cut your incestuous throat. Plain wreckage containing many skeletons and painted with the Malaysian flag was reportedly been found in the Philippines, prompting speculation that it could be flight of H-370. Most likely, it's not like they have a million planes falling around the sky. There's only been two in one year. That's not unusual, is it? Police confirmed they had received reports of the discovery of thick jungle in the remote island of Subway and Tawita province. An audio technician, Jimmy Omar, contacted police in Malaysia to say his aunt, Siti Kayam, had stumbled upon the wreckage while she and others were hunting for birds and that they were going to cut their throats and cook them. Police Commissioner Claudia Abu Rahman, based in neighboring Marino, said that the woman claimed she climbed into the smashed fuselage and saw skeletons on the Halloween show. I get the report about skeletons. <laughs> He said Mr. Jimmy claimed his aunt had entered the aircraft wreckage, which had many human skeletons and bones. When she found the Malaysian flag measuring 70 inches long and 30 inches wide. According to the local media reports, and there were skeletons still in the cockpit seat. The pilot had his safety belt on and the communication gear attached. He rotted in his seat. Nobody puff, you damn idiot. They didn't have a skeleton flying the plane. He rotted in his seat. And I bet there were jungle snails and worms in his eyes. According to the local media report, there was a skeleton in the cockpit seat. He had on his safety belt and communication gear attached to his ears. Speculation grew that the wreckage could belong to the missing Malaysian Airlines flight. It disappeared in March last year with 239 souls aboard. Police! They remain reserved about the report, mindful of confirmation by French authorities. They said that part of an aircraft wing, a flapperon, had been from it earlier this year, but now they're pretty sure that they found it. They found it, and the captain is still in the seat, his bones in the seat. The catastrophic disaster was an explosion, a fire, or even a hijack could have resulted in it veering around the skies. So they think that they found the plane and the captain is still in the seat. And you are listening to the correct views. Armorty signing off. And if you ever want to call the correct views, please call and I'll answer the phone for you. Armorty, happy Halloween. Oh, I think he did an absolutely cheerful report. I have absolutely no idea what it is you're worried about. No, no, absolutely nothing. That, that was great. Great job, Morgan. Oh, dear Lord. Is that it? You guys have ruined my Halloween show. Oh, no, I'm going to be back on Saturday, and I'm going to get my hair fixed, and everyone is going to be able to look at me. Great. Just great. All right, fine. Let me go live and sign this out. Taken over by crazy people. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. That's the end of the show. This is me, Sam, the way I always am. Yes, I got my accents confused a couple of times, but I did this all in one take. You know what? I challenge you to do better in one take. Happy Halloween, friends. Good night and God bless.